How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees with your boys, Alex and Ryan. So 10-2 and two on the season. Only the Los Angeles Dodgers have won 10 games along with the Yankees. Difference is they've lost four and we've only lost two. So I'd say we are the best team in baseball right now in terms of power rankings. And, you know, the pitching has stepped up big over the last couple days against the Miami Marlins. We've given up two runs um, over the last two consecutive games, and that's pretty impressive. Nestor Cortez, Carlos Rodon, we needed these two guys to bounce up, or really bounce back. Um, and step up with the absence of Garrett Cole. Obviously, Garrett Cole is still rehabilitating. He started throwing, playing catch and throwing the ball a little bit, and he's feeling really good, feeling great even. So he is well on pace to return by June at this rate, and I think that's going to be a great situation for the Yankees. As long as we can keep winning games, playing good offense, staying resilient, um, and we can really put ourselves in a really good spot getting back arguably the best pitcher in the game. Um, that's a good situation to be in. 10-2, 10-2 right now on the on the record in the standings, and we don't even have arguably our best player. Um, so, you know, that's kind of exciting. We're really ecstatic about that. But let's talk about Cortez, who looked like the 2022 all-star version of himself on Monday. And then Rodon, who, by the way, is averaging his fastball velocity is the highest it's ever been right now. I know it's a small sample size, but that's pretty encouraging. And I'm excited to kind of look at, uh, you know, where he's going with, with his progression um, where we think his arm is going to be in a couple of weeks from now, and how he looked against Miami yesterday. I know he left the bases loaded to end that game, kind of ran out of gas at the end. But before then, he was lights out, dotting the corners. Fastball was really active, um, alive and well, and his breaking stuff looked on point as well. But Ryan, for, before I dive into the good stuff, how do you do today, my friend? I'm doing good, man. And, you know, you talk about Rodon and kind of what he did yesterday. His secondaries have really taken a step forward. The cutter is, in my opinion, a legitimate offering. And, you know, when we're talking about, all right, how good is your stuff? How good can you compete or how well can you compete at the major league level? Uh, you know, stuff is such a big component of that. It's such a big part of it. And I feel like Rodon and Cortez, their last times through the rotation, this these times against the Marlins, were their best starts in terms of command. It was the starts where I was like, yep. That is how you're supposed to throw the baseball. That's how you're supposed to locate. And Rodon stuff plus the season, 115. That's four ticks up from where it was last year at 111, closer to where it was in 2022 at 118, and exactly where it was in 2021 when he first broke out and put up a 2.37 ERA with the White Sox at 115 as well. The command is the big thing for me. I think as long as Rodon has some semblance of where the ball is going and he can continue to work on that command and get better in that regard, that is when we're going to see him at his best. And I'm really encouraged by that. I, I was super encouraged by the changeup. I feel like his aggression with that pitch uh, was certainly intriguing. I, I just feel good about where we're at with Carlos Rodon right now. I think he'll get better as the season goes on. Other strikeouts walk rates are pretty ugly. 18.8% striker rate to a 10.1% walk rate is not good at all. But he's also avoided getting barreled. His barrel rate's down to four. Is down to six point one percent. That's actually lower than what it was in twenty twenty one or twenty twenty two. I think the cutter is gonna. He's never gonna strike out. I think thirty five percent of batters face something like that. Uh, but I think he can strike out about twenty eight, twenty nine percent if he can get the walks down to about you know five or six percent. The soft contact he can generate with his cutter and the reliance on his secondaries will allow him, in my opinion, to be a much better pitcher and a much more dynamic pitcher than the pitcher we saw last year where he was just giving up bombs, home runs, left and right, couldn't, you know, couldn't attack the zone aggressively. Uh, you know, that cutter, I mean, batters are hitting, they have, they have they, no, not even, they haven't gotten a hit off of it. 23.8% uh, whiff rate, soft contact machine, negative eight launch, to, uh, launch angle, uh, that means it's a ton of ground balls. I just think it's a really strong pitch. Uh, and I think the location of that pitch has been really good as well. Going over to Nesta Cortez, you know, has this stuff been as good as what we were kind of hoping for? No, not in terms of like, you know, fastball velo or whatever. Uh, but I was actually talking to a, a good friend of mine about like, what do you see with Nesta Cortez right now? Um, and, and we were talking a good bit about like the intensity of each pitch. It didn't feel like Rodon and Cortez were ramping up their intensity to go, all right, best stuff max effort every single pitch. I think they were able to locate their secondaries and kind of land them, and that's what made those last starts impressive. Rodon wasn't throwing as hard as he was throwing against the Astros in that first start. Cortez was sitting 88-89 cruise control in the last few innings of his last start, but that that was fine because they were able to go, okay, let's incorporate more change-ups. Here's the cutter. Here's kind of, you know, obviously Cortez can kind of mix things up. You saw that strikeout he got on Jake Berger. He just drops down, throws the sinker upstairs. That's kind of vintage Cortez. And now you're looking at a Yankee rotation that's projected to be pretty good now. If you look at Steamer uh, and, and their updated projections, Luis Seal, Carlos Rodon, and Marcus Stroman are all projected to have ERAs below four. Uh, 
Cortez is at 4.14 and Schmidt is at 4.19. Obviously, Garrett Cole not factored into that, uh, at least on our end. We'll factor him in when he comes back. Uh, but that would be a pretty strong rotation. Three guys with a below 4 ERA and two guys with an ERA before, below 4.2. Alex, I think we'd both sign up for that any day of the week. Now, it is colder weather in New York, so some of that ERA is going to be boosted by the fact of balls and traveling. But it should also be noted that they played in Arizona and they played in Houston, where the ball does travel, and they still pitch pretty well. They still kept the ball in the ballpark, and they still did all the things you hope the Yankees can do. Right now, the Yankees have one of the five best rotations in baseball, just based on performance. I'm not saying that's what it's going to be all year, but just based on performance. And even if you look at stuff, uh, stuff plus, excuse me, I believe they are. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at it now. Yeah, they're still top five. They're the third. They have the third best stuff plus for any rotation in baseball. So the stuff is top of the line. The run prevention is top of the line. Alex, I think we're going to see a much improved version of this rotation, and tonight we get to see Marcus Schoen for his third start, and he's arguably been, not even arguably, he's been the best start on this rotation. I mean, he has given up a run. Perfect ERA over, what, 12 innings pitch. So we're going to see Stroman tonight. We'll be at the game. It's going to be really fun. Excited to watch this Yankee team hopefully pound the Marlins in the final game of this series. That would make it, what, three consecutive series wins? Uh, we would love to see that. So, you know, let's talk about, uh, at least from my perspective, what makes Nestor Cortez so great, when you're watching him and you know that he's on, is when he starts to dance, when he starts to rock, when he starts to showcase that vintage, funky Nestor kind of leg kick, and he does all the different arm slots, and he's mixing in all of his deception pitches. You know, you see, I think he has that, um, he throws a sinker very rarely, very rarely, but the, I guess Savant labels when he changes that arm slot from his usual one to a little bit more of an even plane, they label it a sinker. Uh, and it's really interesting because he tends to get – when he starts to feel confident, he starts to get more unique and more um, distracting. And he does those leg kicks and he starts to really feel like he's in the flow of things. You can tell when Nestor's feeling good because he does – he starts to stray away from that like traditional like – same thing every time and starts to have fun. You know what I mean? Like when Nestor's at the top of his game, he's having the time of his life out there. He's dominating. He's getting excited. He's getting hyped. He's doing unique things. That's what makes Nestor Cortez so so great. You know, the fact that he's not this traditional pitcher that the arm slot's the same every time. You know, he's throwing the same pitches. He gets really creative. And I think that's how he's made up for like not having blazing fast velocity, not having insane movement on some of his pitches, but rather like, he does something he does he pitches in a different way than the traditional pitcher does and that's what makes him so special um Carlos Rodon similarly you can tell when he's on you know what i mean he's a little bit more traditional in his way but there there was uh you know he was mixing in that cutter really nicely yesterday and you, you can see how his confidence is growing right um, and he takes it so personally when he doesn't get it out, when he leaves the bases loaded. He was out there. He was looking, watching the rest of that game like he was pissed. You know what I mean? Like we want guys who give a crap. That, and that's the truth. Like Araldis Chapman at, tour, at the end of his career with the Yankees did not give a crap. He didn't show up for the freaking playoffs. You know what I mean? That's not a culture that we want here. We want guys that care. And we have guys that care. Stroman, guy cares. Rodon, guy cares. Cortez cares, Volpe cares, Judge cares, Soto cares, Glaber cares. And a lot of people are kind of ripping Glaber to shreds right now because of his numbers at the leadoff spot. But what goes under the radar is that he has seen the most pitches on this team of any batter. Like he is setting up, like, yeah, maybe his numbers don't look that great, but you don't think that he's setting Soto and Judge up for better at bats? You know what I mean? Like he's setting Soto up for these great at bats. He's he's grinding out this ABs. And then these pitchers are going up against Soto having to just come off a really difficult at bat and face one of the best players of our generation. You know what I mean? It's like there's a lot more of nuance that goes into just, oh, well, you know, Glaber's hitting 200 with a 280 OBP right now or 300 OBP. No, he's grinding out eight pitch at bats, nine pitch at bats, and Soto's going up there with this, with this pitcher gassed, you know, trying to now go up and, and fight and be aggressive against another elite hitter. So and then you have Judge after him for God's sakes. And then Stanton, who's been red hot. Why do you think this team has been scoring so many runs? You know you can't overlook some of these uh, these variables here. But you know these two pitchers coming off Tommy, uh, rather not Tommy John surgery, but rather their individual issues, Nestor with the shoulder issue that spent all winter in Tampa with the Yankee staff getting this thing fixed, and then Rodon with the chronic back injury diagnosis last year, the left forearm strain, the hamstring injury, you name it. The guy was torn apart. He dropped a lot of weight. He looks healthy. His velocity is up. He looks uh, more flexible. He just looks better. I think with, with Garrett Cole out right now, the Yankees needed guys to step up. Stroman has stepped up. Cortez 
with his performance on Monday, he's starting to showcase what we knew he could do uh, from what we saw back in 2022. Uh, Rodon looks to be, you know, being he look, yesterday was the version that we wanted when we signed him to a six year, $162 million deal. That was the picture we got. And we finally got to see that outing from him. That was like, all right. We needed someone to step up to to help supplement Garrett Cole. We have four guys stepping up right now. Cortez with his performance, huge by the way, to help stifle any further um, you know fatigue in the bullpen. Have a couple injuries there. You know that was a huge performance from him. From him. Um, of course, Ian Hamilton steps in like what was the sixth inning, seventh inning yesterday, and and helps us get out of that no problem. Um, you know, it, it, I mean, he gave, there was two earned runs, two unearned runs rather, but you know he got the outs quickly, just made some contact. So. You know, right now, I feel like this Yankee team is in a good spot. You're 10-2, and and you don't have your best pitcher. Um, The Yankees decided not to go out and sign or acquire anybody this offseason in terms of, you know, once Cole went down or, you know, Blake Snell, whatever. They waited, and I think that was the right move. Look how many injuries. And this is what we were saying, Ryan, a couple weeks ago before the season started. Wait until the trade deadline. Make sure these guys are healthy before you go out and get them. Because Shane Bieber is done for the year. You know what I mean? Um, Look at all the guys that have been injured over the first couple of weeks of this season. Pitchers are dropping left and right. Waiting until the trade deadline to make sure that these guys are healthy is essential. It ended up being the perfect strategy. So I'm happy the Yankees are doing the right thing, being cautious, still winning games despite not having one of their best players. But, you know, right now, how confident are you in this rotation? Obviously, they're playing pretty well. Luis Hill has been a godsend. Uh, Marcus Stroman has been fantastic, great value for his, at his price tag. And then Clark Schmidt, you know, I want to see a little bit more from him, but, you know, I want to get your thoughts on those other guys um, that are also trying to kind of compound on their, you know, initial impressions this year. Yeah, I mean, the first thing that stands out to me is that you look at this rotation, right? You look at the offense, look at everything. The Yankees, you mentioned, like, they care, right? There's a level of intensity. There's a level of, like, I mean, you have Alex Rodrigo <laughs> barking in the dugout, right? And that clip is great. I, I actually think that that's a really, again, like, it's a, it's an awesome thing to see a Yankee team that's a little less buttoned up, that's a little less, like, got to do it this way, got to do it that way, and more like, you know what, be authentic, be yourself, be true to yourself, uh, kind of that kind of squad where this team is locked in, this team is dialed in, this team is playing fun, and look, there's going to be a stretch where this team is not playing good baseball, because that happens to every team. Every team, I mean, talk about the Dodgers, right? That super team of, you know, Tani, Betts, Freeman, Glass now, Yamamoto, this, that, all these guys. They dropped the series to the Cubs, who dropped the series to the Rangers, who, you know, kind of et cetera, et cetera. Teams are going to, you're going to lose a series, you're going to lose games, things are going to happen. Um, and, and, you know, how does this team respond? How does this team bounce back? That's kind of when you test the metal of these guys. In 2022, it compounded, right? Like, it went very quickly from... You know, uh, Aaron Hicks saying have some F you, you know, energy to the Yankees having a second half slump and looking nothing like the team that they looked like in the first half because they lost a few guys and they started losing games. And you kind of think of that series they lose in Houston where they get swept to open the all-star break. And it just never, it, like in September, they kind of got hot for a little bit. But once the playoffs rolled around, they barely squeak past the Guardian team. They're clearly better than, uh, and then they walk into Houston, and, and, and by game two, Severino was talking about uh, the fly ball was hit that hard on a 3-1 jack. Are you kidding me? You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying that to disparage Luis Severino. I think Luis Severino is a great player. He's one of my favorite players to play for the Yankees, but more so to say, that energy, I really didn't feel like was gonna con- was conducive to winning. I didn't feel like that was going to lead to winning. Uh, this kind of energy does, right? Like, that kind of energy of, like, we we are the New York Yankees. We are going to be authentic to ourselves and each individual on this team. Uh, and they, they play their tail off. There's an intensity of this team. I feel like Aaron Boone has got a little more liberty to just kind of manage a little bit. I'm not saying that the Yankees have controlled him, but more so he's playing Verdugo every day. Right? Like, I know that, like, Grisham, you know, I, I would love to see Grisham play because, you know, I, I would like to see players play. But let's be real here. Verdugo's been playing better. Verdugo's red hot. Verdugo's going to keep playing. And he, and Aaron Boone trusts Verdugo to go against lefties, even though Verdugo's naturally never been a guy who hits lefties. So I, I think Boone's been able to say, I don't want to go p- put a punt, punt line about there. I'm not putting, you know, my, my fifth infielder. I'm not putting, you know, Jose Trevino every other day because, you know, I need to give my catcher's days off. I want to play these guys and and kind of noticing with pitchers, they're going to get hurt, right? Like pitchers are going to get hurt. Shane Bieber goes to drive line to kind of get more efficient with his mechanics and still gets hurt. Uh, you, you think about guys who have rehabbed and come back from Tommy John just to re-tear the UCL guys who are, I mean, what do you, what, what could you possibly say about Framber Valdez as a workhorse? He, the guys, the guys always pitching and he's got an elbow issue. Garrett Cole, the most durable pitcher in baseball. We have him on the IL with, uh, you know, nerve inflation in his elbow. You got to just pitch these guys until they can't. 
Like that that's really where we're at, Alex. There, you you pitch them till you can't. Um and, and and right now, I'm just not necessarily sure where, you know, if they're gonna keep be able to keep up the pitching they've been able to be able to keep up because they looked excellent on that side of things. And I'm not sure how well the offense will look. I'm not sure which guys are gonna stay hot, which guys are gonna cool down, which guys are gonna heat up that are not starting off the season great. But what I do know is that they have a such a talented group of guys, and I, I want to kind of give a shout out here specifically to James Rousen. The approach, their approach is remarkable. Like obviously, anytime the pitching staff does well, we kind of know it's Matt Blake. We understand Matt Blake, Sam Breen, the director of pitching, um, the various uh, pitching coaches they have at the major league level, whether that's Desi Drusel or uh, Mike Harkey. They have so many guys who are just so smart and know what they're doing on that side of the ball. It hasn't felt like we've had that on the hitting side of the ball in recent years. Like, not saying that we haven't had smart hitting coaches, but more so we haven't had a hitting coach that necessarily clicks with these guys. Rousey clicks with these guys. The Yankees have gone from, you know, one of the teams that were the most passive at the plate in terms of looking at hittable pitches to the te- one of the teams that's most aggressive at swinging out those pitches. The Yankees have gone from a team that sees few pitches per plate appearance to one of the best, right? The Yankees have gone from a team that, uh, you know, overall just, like, doesn't have a game plan. They just kind of let pitchers put them in 0-2, 0-1 counts to seeing guys jump on the first pitch. Yeah, when I see, like, I, I, when I see Stan swing at a first pitch fastball down the plate, sometimes a whiff, sometimes it ends with a double play, but I... I want him swinging at that pitch. It's a fastball down the plate. I want him swinging at that. What I don't want him swinging at is the slider down and away because I know he's not getting that pitch. I know he doesn't have the zone coverage for it. So, you know, I just feel like the approaches are better. I mean, we, we talked about this with Volpe where it's like, he went 0 for 4 yesterday, but it felt like he had really good at-bats the entire time. Did you feel like the Yankees only scored 3 runs? I feel like the Yankees scored 50 runs because the at-bats are quality. They knocked Puck out before the 5th inning. They ran his pitch count up. They killed the bullpen again for the Miami Marlins. They're going to walk in today with a shortened bullpen. The Yankees have only used Holmes, um, Mosheski, and uh, Hamilton. And Holmes is probably available. Hamilton, Hampton, Hamilton's probably not the bullpen's fully stacked. They got seven guys ready to go today with Marcus Stroman, who's been the most, you know, reliable guy in terms of pitching deep into the games on the mound today. You kind of expect to win. Like, you, you feel like they're they're going to wake up and they're just going to play really good baseball and get the win. And that's a confidence I haven't felt like I've had with this team since 2022. And even then, it didn't feel like the talent was nearly as good. I, I agree completely. I mean, this is going to be exciting to see, um, you know, how the Yankees continue to approach this pitching. But for now, all seems to be trending in the right direction, and we love that. So for now, we're really excited. Now, the inevitable cold streak will happen this season, but, you know, the truth is is that we can survive it. And why? Because you got an offense that's capable of putting up five-plus runs every single day. You know what I mean? That's the truth. Um, and they show up against good teams. Look, great teams beat the brakes off of bad teams. Like, you can ask anybody in any single sport. Um, great teams beat the brakes off of bad ones. The Yankees are beating the brakes off of the Miami Marlins. No, yesterday they won 3-2, to two, but that, that game should have been more like a 6-2 like a to two game. You know, they, they just missed a home run by a couple inches from multiple players. Um, tonight, with Stroman on the mound... I mean, he's been fantastic. And this this Miami team, they look like they are just in the dumps. They look like they don't want to win. They look like they have no fight in them. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Miami started selling off key pieces at some point this season. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Maybe the Yankees can capitalize on that exactly. And that's probably what they were thinking when, let's wait and see what happens. Miami has some good players. You know, Arias, you have Luzardo. I know not a lot of people want Lozardo after his last outing, but he's got good stuff objectively. You know, the Yankees, give Matt Blake Lozardo and watch what happens. That's what I would say. You know what I mean? So if the Yankees wait, buy their time, go and, you know, pluck players from a team that's in the dumps trying to sell off and reset, you might have an opportunity to get someone for a, 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 a much cheaper price point than you did just a couple of weeks ago. Um, the Miami Marlins, we're getting a good example of who could be valuable to us, right? So, you know, at this point in time, Let's scout them a little bit while we're beating the crap out of them. But great teams beat the crap out of bad ones. And you're seeing the Yankees absolutely dominate. Even a 3-2 game, I thought the Yankees dominated yesterday completely. So um, you're watching excellent defense. You're watching great, good. I mean, Stanton's at bats yesterday. I I don't think we've seen this level of Stanton at bats in three years. Like, straight up. Maybe four years. His first year with the Yankees maybe was the last time we saw him grinding out at-bats like this. And making contact, fouling off pitches, you know, staying in in at-bats, being aggressive, waiting for his to hit. And he's he's hitting balls the other way. He's pulling balls. I mean, it's beautiful. It's beautiful baseball, you know, and we're seeing it firsthand. So, guys, you know, always happy to hear your thoughts below in the pitching. Any other things you want us to discuss, always happy to address on the podcast moving forward. Make sure to like and subscribe, as always. And we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode.
Perfect. Perfect.